What is going on YouTube? It is Angus coming at you in Rick Sanchez knowledge bomb loaded mode today because um, yeah, in this video, this is gonna be knowledge bomb loaded. I'm gonna be touching on what you would have seen in the thumbnail. If it fits your macros, flexible dieting, is it legit? Is it just a diet? Like, is it fucked? Is it the way to go? Like we're gonna be breaking all aspects of this shit down. So that way it's gonna to help to give you epic clarity and insight into this awesome way of living, but also to gauge if you actually feel that it could be a suited good fit for you, because just like anything, this isn't for everyone. Now, obviously, if you're a returning subscriber, you will know that from time to time, I love to do content-based educational videos for this channel. In other words, not just sick videos of me eating a shitload of food or training or doing a food challenge or whatever it may be. So if you're new to the channel and um, you know, you, <laughs> I guess are here for that sort of shit, head up the, um, I guess the upload section or just scroll through the videos of this channel and you can see some of my recent stuff. There's all sorts of challenges there, all sorts of other videos, all sorts of good stuff. And if you love what I'm about, feel free to subscribe. I'd love to see you hanging around and checking out my content and just growing with me and the channel as a whole. And obviously, if you're a returning subscriber, get excited for some sick education. Get excited for some Rick Sanchez knowledge bombs because I'm holding nothing back in this video today. I'm someone who is so passionate about flexible dieting. It changed my life back in 2013 when I first discovered it. So today's gonna be all about, yeah, helping you understand the ins and outs of how it works, obviously understand whether it's legit or not, and um, yeah, just become fucking smart <laughs> as you go through the, uh, the the following minutes with this video. So stay tuned and um, yeah, let's get stuck into four parts of different content. And um, yeah, let me just brain dump all this knowledge onto you and let's hammer it out together. Now part one, what we're going to be looking at first is basically what it is and what it isn't, all right? So essentially what we're going to kick off with first is basically, well, what it is. Now my personal definition of it, so obviously you've got uh, IIFYM, this stands for if it fits your macros. Now what I believe it to be is a moderative approach to understanding food and in a way that allows you to, once mastered, control how you look, how you feel, and how you function. So in other words, how you look, meaning your aesthetics, how much body fat you have, and also how much muscle mass you have. How you feel coming down to kind of just, well, your overall vitality, the energy that you have, your zing and your zest and your overall health. And then the other aspect being how you function, meaning, well, yeah, like <laughs> how well you can perform in the gym, how, uh, how fit you are, that sort of stuff. So it's like by dominating and becoming a master of IFYM, this is what essentially it is, a moderative approach to achieving those things. And by moderative approach, I'm meaning, uh, I'm, I'm meaning basically to truly developing a healthy relationship with food. So this means where you no longer see food as good and bad, but basically you're learning how to make any and all foods work for you as you go about meeting your personal targets. Now this meaning protein, carbohydrates, fat, and fiber. So that way in the context of your overall goals and your current body composition, you're able to make food choices to meet basic requirements in terms of where you're at in the stage of the game. Now, if we look at what it isn't, it basically isn't a golden ticket to um, consume copious amounts of hyper palatable foods. And by that, I mean the sort of stuff that you would typically classify as hashtag YOLO, hashtag junk, hashtag dirty. Like when people are fresh into this flexible approach to food, what I typically see them do is they go, right, fuck yeah, I've got 2000 calories to use. I'm gonna, you know, just go and get a large meal from Macca's of a Big Mac and you know like neck minute all of a sudden you've now consumed two-thirds of your intake of calories and yeah you're going to basically have no chance of hitting your protein or anything else and you'll feel shit you'll feel hungry and it's like you're going to shoot yourself in the foot so people make these sort of mistakes in terms of well yeah like people see it as an excuse you to go out of your way to eat nutrient poor food and yeah well <laughs> it's not like this so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go into a tad more depth in terms of like what it is and what it isn't. And the scenario of this, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be using my iPad to teach you some cool shit to illustrate this. 
Now, as I was saying before, right, what it is, is it is a moderative approach to basically understanding how to make food work for you in the context of controlling how you look, how you feel, and how you function. And how it does that is that basically it comes under the, uh, the umbrella that encases all these other things that we're gonna to touch on shortly. So in other words, what we'll put here is we'll put in thermo, dynamics right now what this is is basically the balance that is energy in versus energy out and understanding calories and then under this macros now this is essentially what makes flexible dieting and IFYM so effective is because we're up here rocking and rolling with basically what matters most in terms of controlling aesthetics and all this sort of stuff right now, in terms of anything else you've probably tried, in terms of like trying to get lean, trying to get toned, trying to drop body fat, all this sort of stuff, you've probably done things like paleo, you might have done old mate keto, you might have done other old mates clean eating over here. Um, you might have tried fasting. So in other words, where you push back your first meal of the day till about 12 or 2 p.m. and you stop eating at about eight or so. That way you've got a 16 hour period of time where you're not eating anything. Maybe you've done the one meal a day squad. Uh, maybe you've done isogenics. Maybe you've done Herbalife. Um, maybe you've done like all of this so far as you can see is just coming under that umbrella of what matters most, right? Maybe you've done certain supplements. Maybe you've done old mate Atkins. Maybe you even went vegan for the sake of this or like gluten free. Um, like when it comes to any and all of this stuff, right? The reason why these things work is because they keep you under the umbrella that is a calorie deficit, right? So in other words, all of these work because you are dialing in on effectively, essentially, like you're taking in less calories than what your body is burning, right? Rather than what for a lot of us do, we take in, well, more calories than what we burn and therefore this is why we typically will gain weight. So with If It Fits Your Macros, basically what's happening here is that we're focusing on this umbrella Right? This umbrella is essentially what the whole concept of IFYM is built around. And then that way, based on whatever your food values are and your food preferences and lifestyle choices and stuff like that, you can be sticking to any one of these um, while still being focused on the overall umbrella. Right? So that's effectively what allows IFYM to work or effectively what it is. Um, and then essentially where a lot of people um, will, I guess, kind of have a misconception of it is that they think that, as I said, <laughs> that it's a golden ticket to be able to eat whatever you want, kind of like in Willy Wonka the Chocolate Factory where he's like, oh shit, I've won. And you know, they think they're gonna be in for a lifetime supply of chocolate and life is gonna be sunshine, lollipops and rainbows. Like, that's not the case with IFYM. And what we're gonna be going into now is effectively the pros and the cons behind it all. So part two, now we're going to be looking at the pros and cons behind flexible dieting and IFYM. Now pros that I believe in terms of what I've personally experienced and what I've seen within my clients and stuff like that is a whole range of pros. So we're going to kick off first with the fact that it caters and allows for you to be able to model everything around your lifestyle demands and what you have got going on irrespective of your age irrespective of what season of the year it is irrespective of whether you're traveling irrespective of whether you're home like it's like you can still create success without being in a specific routine so in other words one of the biggest things that makes it so um well so enticing and so exciting is that yes it does allow you to be able to um, have a wide variety of foods in your day to day and your month to month and your hour to hour eating choices um, while catering for anything that it is that you have got going on provided that you give a fuck and you're willing to put in some work. Um, one of the big pros that I personally find for myself is that it gives you back the control that's lost 
with conventional dieting because with conventional dieting you're boxed into rules and restrictions and guidelines in accordance to whether you're doing paleo keto you know whatever it may be 1200 calories etc they all come with their varying amounts of restrictions and guidelines and rules that you're boxed into whereas IFYM you decide the relevant amount of sameness or rigidity or whatever that you want based on food personality and your overall lifestyle demands which I think is fantastic because remember that this allows you to moderate your well your diet around your lifestyle in this sort of scenario so it gives you back that control um, obviously with a approach like this you become far more educated than the average person, the average gym goer, the average Joe, the average Jane that's trying to get lean. You know, it elevates you beyond all of that so that way you actually get to learn how to make food work for you rather than kind of just like, you know, uh, for a lot of people, their level of knowledge and their level of experience and stuff like that, it's like all they know is just how to do what they're told and this is kind of what happens when the media teaches us all their shit. And when the media tells us to do all these diets and just whatever's trending or whatever, like you're not really learning how to do anything, all you're doing is you're following, right? Whereas with IFYM, you are making educated decisions based on, well, what foods you want to eat that will allow you to eat towards the targets that you personally have in terms of macros, in terms of overall calories, in terms of like the timing of the meals and stuff that suits yourself. Um, and in my personal opinion as well, it's cheaper. It allows you to save a lot of money because um, you're not pumping loads of dollars into hashtag superfoods, into organic stuff, into whatever. Unless of course those are your values, then by all means go for it. But like I know that when I was a bro, aka in the past, where I was just jumping from diet to diet, trend to trend to trend, that sort of thing. Um, you know, when I was at that sort of time or level of experience and knowledge, like I was pumping a good annual between three to 600 a month into supplements, into special types of food and that sort of stuff. And I saw no changes in my aesthetics and health. The reason being was because I knew nothing about macronutrients and calories and um, yeah, like, <laughs> you see what I mean? So this elevates your education to really be at an awesome level that frees you from the dieting world. Um, I personally believe that it's awesome for catering for social scenarios because for a lot of us um, where we undo our efforts is when we're at parties or when we're traveling or when we're at social events and naturally well yeah if you're on a diet you need to stick to specific foods and need to stick to specific meals whereas with IFYM well if you are a regular so for example like you like to drink booze or you like to go out for meals with friends and family and stuff like that you can quite easily accommodate for that sort of stuff provided you just know how to shift around your calories and macros for the day and then last but not least easy adherence because simply it caters for anything and everything that life may throw you provided you give a fuck now if we look at cons right um, naturally with all this sort of stuff um, you know like for it to work and for it to be something that is well filled with all these pros you need to be someone who is willing to for a period of time weigh all of your food you need to be someone for a period of time uh, who is willing to track all of your foods in a food tracking app like my fitness pal or calorie king or you know the equivalent because otherwise you won't build the skills and the necessary visuals the understanding of how to make food work for you and for a lot of us we you know our food personality doesn't like that we we can become too obsessive and that sort of thing so it's like well the cons is that you kind of need to put in a bit of work in terms of tracking food for a period of time you know between three to six months at least so that way you can really start to learn like yep that chicken breast is uh, 150 grams it's got 30 grams of protein yeah sweet like for you, yeah it's kind of like for a lot of us we don't want to put in work we don't like to think and therefore if that's you well you know creating an actual meal plan um, might be best for you or finding a meal plan that suits you that caters for your food preferences and stuff like that while still putting you into a calorie deficit could be beneficial but for those of us who aren't willing to track for a period of time and don't like to think about making food choices and stuff like that you know, this sort of whole flexible approach might not be suited for you because you might be someone who's more beneficial for black and white rigidity, AKA eating the same stuff each day. It's all gonna meet my target, so therefore happy days, like, you see what I mean? Whereas for those of us who love variety and love eating different stuff and just, you know, wanna have as much control as possible, well, that's where the big pros of this moderative approach to fat loss and just controlling your aesthetics, that's where that real magic kicks in. Now for part three, what we're gonna be looking at is, is this just another diet? 
or can a lifestyle actually be built out of seeing and approaching food in this way? Now, just to touch on again, like what a diet is in terms of its nature and what it means and what it actually um, you know, entitles basically is for a period of well, like it's a short term thing, right? Like you can never build a lifestyle out of a diet because we diet for six, like, oh, well, no, that actually are some short term, like really hardcore based diets. So like two weeks, six weeks, eight weeks, 12 weeks, um, you know, six months, like a diet is only ever a short term period of time where we're applying ourselves to a specific set of rules and beliefs and parameters in favor of achieving an aesthetic outcome, right? But then stats show that 80% of us can't maintain the weight that is lost or the lifestyle that we're trying to build from said diet. 80% of us can't maintain the results or those rules, etc., beyond three to six months after the diet's completion. So what that shows us is that, well, more often than not, society as a whole doesn't do well when trying to achieve goals based on restrictive paradigms and um, yeah, like <laughs> uh, choices and actions, right? So in other words, for you to be able to actually craft a lifestyle out of the means that you're choosing to apply yourself to, it needs to be something that caters for, well, yeah, your lifestyle. <laughs> so this is where what I truly believe to be the case is that like IFYM and flexible dieting is the key for a lot of us to basically well building this lifestyle component and I'm going to show you why. Now this key that we have here, right, the reason why it's a big ass key is that it's the key of moderation. All right. Now, as I said before, all diets, they work because they put you into a calorie deficit. All right. Now the thing to note, right, is that obviously with each of the diets, right, if we, if we refer back to our lovely umbrella over here, right, each of these different forms of dieting and trending um, you know, diets and way to utilize food, etc., right, why a lot of us can't really build a lifestyle in any of these is because the, the deficit of calories, right, is too rigid to be able to stick to. Right, so it's too rigid. There's no happiness, there's no enjoyment. We don't feel healthy, we don't feel happy and therefore we bail on it. And then the, that's when the stop and start sort of scenarios happen for us, right? So in these sort of scenarios here, the reason why IFYM is the key, right? Is because it's built upon moderation, meaning that you can't craft a lifestyle that's built upon restriction or rules that don't align to your food personality. So let's say for example that you're like me and you know eating carbs and you know pasta and sugary things and um, sweet things and just all that sort of good stuff, right? Like if that sort of stuff really makes you happy and fills you with dopamine and just lights your solar light when you eat it. If you're trying to then say for example do keto, right? Which is obviously very low carb slash no carb that naturally is going to go against the grain of who you are. You're not going to get mass enjoyment from eating to that way of, well, living. And therefore, well, naturally, you can see that keto is going to be a consistent pushing shit uphill scenario and you're not going to be able to stick to it long term, right? So therefore, with IFYM, if you were doing that, you could still create a calorie deficit via including a lot of carbs and get the results that you're after because, well, <laughs> you're adhering to a calorie deficit with carbs included and naturally that aligns to your food personality. See what I mean? So once again, touching on the fact that moderation is the key here, right? It's gonna set you up to be able to have that element of freedom that is missing. Freedom comes from being able to track your food choices and therefore be able to make your own, well, food choices. So in other words, being able to eat when you want to. So naturally for a lot of us, we seem to think that, um, you know, we need to have six more meals a day because it's gonna boost our metabolism. Or we seem to think that eating our la eating large meals at the end of the day when we're chilling out is bad. So in other words, like it allows you to have the control over all of that based on what suits you. And then naturally, because of all of this as well, it allows you to have great balance. And by that, I mean a great balance between um, nutrient rich, and then nutrient poor food. I don't like to call food good or bad, clean or junk, because I personally believe that one of the greatest things that IFYM has taught me is that there's no such thing as good or bad food. What does exist though is 
um, crazy quantities. So in other words, like, um, like you can die by drinking too much water, um, yeah, but you're taking in too much vitamin C, um, that can actually kill you as well. Um, so it's like, it's understanding that there's such a thing as good and bad quantities of food. And then naturally, well, because you learn how energy works, you then are able to easily control how your aesthetics look and how much fat is held on your system because, well, you understand that a deficit is what's necessary to be able to create fat loss. Um, TDDE, in terms of eating at maintenance, it's what is, is what's necessary for you to be able to maintain your actual weight. And then for you to be able to have any chance of gaining more muscle and to be able to actually, well, add some more mass to your frame, then you need to eat in a surplus. So in other words, it's kind of elevating your knowledge beyond focusing on just, well, quality of food, which is what every clean eater and hashtag healthy eater under the sun knows, like that's great. But what you're learning as well is that you're mastering the other aspects of things, which is the quantity aspect. So that way you're becoming that real master of well, controlling how you look, how you feel, how you function, and then therefore, well, in my opinion, becoming part of the 5% really who, like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna put you here because this is just a big claim, but where you'll truly be able to love yourself. Because at the end of the day, your health is all you have, and if you don't have an awesome, thriving relationship with food, with, um, you know, your consistency and adherence and stuff like that, well, then you're not gonna be set up to be able to get full happiness from all, all the other things that you have in your life. Like, do you see what I mean here? So it's like, this is the key to all those things to be able to ensure then that a lifestyle can be built. So asking yourself, can I see myself sticking to these parameters, the, the things that I'm doing beyond six to 12 months? And if the answer is no, well then naturally what you're doing is you're in a diet. So why IFYM is awesome in terms of another reason why it's legit is because it is something that if applied yourself to properly, you can become the master of moderation here and truly craft a lifestyle out of its actual, um, yeah, like focus points. Now part four, what we're gonna be looking at is a couple of different things. First one being how people stuff up or fuck up. Um, the whole aspect that is IFYM. And me personally, if I'm honest, I actually stuffed up um, my initial first approach with taking on board IFYM. And that's because I did what a lot of people do, and that is they go too low, too quickly, or even right off the bat with their actual calories that they're consuming. So, so for example, with myself, I um, went, all right, cool, awesome, um, IFYM allow me to be able to eat whatever I want. Happy fucking days, great. Oh, okay, yep, yep, sweet, I can eat whatever I want, but surely, uh, you know, <laughs> if I eat less and less calories, um, I'll get shredded quicker. So I actually dropped my calories right to 1200, combine that with trying to eat solely 100% hashtag clean, and then naturally my binge eating tendencies continued. Yeah, where I would be able to stick to it for a few days, and be like, fuck, this is too hard. Go and eat all the stuff that I was cutting out, then obviously, yeah, we feel shit and we go back into it again and we try, rinse and repeat. So that's how a lot of people stuff up with IFYM is that they, you know, they have this sense of, oh, awesome, cool, I can eat whatever I want. But then they combine that with, well, past shitty eating habits, right? So in other words, well, a typical scenario is that someone goes too low too quickly with their calories, they reduce them too quickly, and um, yeah, they, don't have that true sense of moderation about their eating choices. So some tips that I can give you there to be able to really make it stick for you if you wanna make sure that you don't stuff it up is to don't go really low like at the start. You wanna try and eat as much as possible to trigger the result that you're after. So if you're new to the game that is IFYM and this flexible approach to fat loss, if I were you, I'd probably like maybe just track what you are actually eating so that you can get a concept as to the rough amount of calories that you're eating. So that way when you actually go to work out your TDE, so your total daily energy expenditure, which dictates your maintenance intake, you can kind of go, oh wow, like I'm actually eating at maintenance, sick. And, that, and if that's the case, you can drop your calories by maybe 20% and kickstart the fat loss process. Or you might actually find that you're massively under eating. And therefore, if that's the case, which is more often than not really common for people, um, you can start gradually increasing your way up um, at a pace that suits you. 
up to your up to your TDE intake, sit there for a little while, and then gradually start reducing just like the first scenario. Or you might actually find that you're overeating and you're in an actual surplus most of the time. And if that's the case, well then it's like, oh fuck, wow, I need to dial in a bit more here. And then you know, get yourself to a stage where you actually are eating at TDE, and then naturally you'll start dropping fat from there as you reduce your calories, right? Because the goal is to always have somewhere to go. Because naturally, gradually over time, you'll have to shave off some of your macros and shave off some of your calories to get you dropping more and more fat. But um, obviously, if you go too low too quickly, you're going to be in a state where you feel like you're on poverty calories. You'll struggle to adhere to those set calories. And therefore, this is where people typically YOLO, right? So be weary of that. Now, if you find that it's too difficult to have all these focus points in terms of a specific protein target, a specific carbs target, a specific fats target and fiber target and like it just seems all too much to try and hit so many numbers if i was you what i'd actually do is take on board even more of a flexible approach and that's to engulf flexible dieting and basically what this is is it's almost the same as ifym but essentially what you're focusing on is you're focusing on hitting a specific amount of calories a specific amount of protein and a specific amount of fiber and you're not actually really concerning yourself with specific carbs and fat ratios um, and this is what I do the bulk of the time personally because I like having that much flexibility up my sleeve obviously I don't do it all the time because at different stages of my journey where I need to dial in or I'm close to a comp or whatever it may be that's when I'm more kind of anal about exactly what my macronutrients are but if you find that you want to have yeah just less and less focus points and be able to have more, more flexibility up your sleeve in doing so that's where flexible dieting can be a much better suit for you and um, yeah like be aware that with depending on someone's mindset like i have seen people develop binge eating disorders from ifym simply because like they with them like it's as if they're too rooted in restriction and just seeing food as good and bad that they're not in a good healthy headspace to be able to have flexibility and control just yet and if you feel that, that could potentially be you well then what might be better suited for you for a period of time at least is just to focus on not even tracking at all but to rather just focus on trying to get in say for example plants at every meal um, getting in protein at every meal um, drinking more water throughout the day and before you have each of your meals moving each day, learning to intuitively eat and understand hunger cues um, for a good three to six months um, and like just rebuilding kind of like that lost art that is you know, tuning in with your body before you actually start tracking and stuff like that because take it from me, you used to be a binge eater, like it's not the easiest thing in the world to overcome but it can be overcome through just this stuff that I've shared and embracing the lifestyle that is moderation or deprivation and seeing food no longer as good or bad, but as fuel for performance, happiness, and lifestyle. So I hope that you've enjoyed um, this fresh kind of real knowledge um, and raw uh, video in terms of sharing all aspects as to what I believe in terms of, um, yeah, what encompasses the IFYM way of doing things. I personally believe it to be legit and something that can be a great asset to anyone's journey who's looking to really just take their knowledge and their understanding of food to the next level. Obviously, as you've seen, there's various people who it's probably not suited for and they shouldn't do it. Not at all, but just not just yet, if that makes sense. So do me a favor. If you found this video valuable in terms of the minutes that you invested into watching it, um, drop us a comment below and let us know your experience with flexible dieting and IFYM in terms of if it's something that you follow. Um, or let me know what you actually personally follow and what you actually personally believe in terms of, yeah, what's allowed you to achieve success with your body transformation so far. I'd love to hear. Because obviously there's many ways to skin a cat at the end of the day as long as the method that you're utilizing is something that you enjoy and caters for your lifestyle demands. Well then, fuck yeah, that's awesome. That's what it's all about. Um, so yeah, if you're a returning subscriber, drop some love in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you and get a like from you. And um, hey, if you're new to the channel, I'd highly encourage you that um, if you love, you know, just learning this sort of no bullshit approach to getting lean or whatever that you hang around and that you subscribe, go and check out some of the other videos in my upload section. You will love what this channel is about. Um, stay tuned for more sick videos and some more content into the future as well. I've got a lot of cool stuff planned. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, scroll back a couple and you can check out some cool food challenges and me sharing kind of what's in my fat loss shopping trolley. Um, and yeah, thanks so much for watching. Big love, really appreciate you. See you next time on the tubes. Take care.